I'm Dr. Keanu Sane, and I'm a political scientist specializing in international relations and public law, with particular emphasis on the legal and political history of Hawaii. I'm also a plaintiff in a lawsuit filed against the Obama administration on June 1st, 2010, in Federal District Court in Washington, D.C. In order to better understand the lawsuit and its profound impact today, I've produced short vignettes that cover certain sections of the complaint. This particular presentation covers Hawaii as an independent and sovereign state since the 19th century. Unlike the English barons who forced King Richard to proclaim the Magna Carta, King Kamehameha III in 1840 voluntarily relinquished his absolute authority and granted a written constitution to his people. As an evolution of Hawaiian constitutional law, the 1864 Constitution superseded the previous Constitutions of 1840 and 1852 and remains the Constitution of the country today. Under the Constitution, governmental powers were separated and the power to make law was vested in the legislature, the power to execute or administer law was vested in the monarch, and the power to judge law was vested in the courts. Prompted by a desire to achieve explicit recognition of Hawaii as an independent and sovereign state, King Kamehameha III and Privy Council appointed three representatives to meet with the governments of the United States, France, and Great Britain. If the king succeeds in getting explicit recognition from these three countries, which at the time were the major powers in the Pacific, the rest of the countries, or states as they call them, in the family of nations would follow. The king's envoys were successful in getting the British and French to jointly recognize the Hawaiian Kingdom as an independent state on November 28, 1843 at the Court of London. Here the proclamation specifically states that both countries have thought it right to engage reciprocally to consider the Sandwich Islands as an independent state. At the time, the islands were also known as the Sandwich Islands because of the name given in the 1770s by Captain James Cook. Although President John Tyler afforded recognition of the Hawaiian Kingdom on December 19, 1842, it was conditional upon the actions to be taken by France and Great Britain. Explicit recognition by the United States came by way of letter from Secretary of State John C. Calhoun on July 6, 1844. The Secretary specifically stated that the Sandwich Islands were regarded by the President as a full recognition on the part of the United States of the independence of the Hawaiian government. The rest of the family of nations followed up by entering into treaties with the Hawaiian Kingdom of a most favored nation status. These treaties include Austria-Hungary, which at the time was a union between the kingdoms of Austria and Hungary. They were later separated into two states in 1918. Belgium, Bremen, Bremen used to be a German city-state, but merged by treaty into a single German state in 1871 under the German Empire. Denmark, France, Germany, Great Britain, Hamburg. Like Bremen, Hamburg was a German city-state and later merged into the Greater Germany in 1871. Italy, Japan, Netherlands, Portugal, Russia, Samoa. When Samoa signed this treaty, it entered into a political confederation with the Hawaiian Kingdom. Spain, Switzerland, Sweden, Norway, which at the time was a union of the kingdoms of both Sweden and Norway. They were later separated into two states in 1905, and the United States of America. Prior to the breakout of the Crimean War in 1854, King Kamehameha III proclaimed the Hawaiian Kingdom to be a neutral state during war, which was also made a provision in the 1852 Hawaiian-Swedish-Norwegian Treaty as well as the 1863 Hawaiian-Spanish Treaty. In a statement issued by the government when asked about how can a person acquire Hawaiian citizenship, the Minister of the Interior in 1868 stated, 
In the judgment of His Majesty's government, no one acquires citizenship in this kingdom unless he is born here or born abroad of Hawaiian parents, either native or naturalized, during their temporary absence from the kingdom, or unless, having been made the subject of another power, he becomes a subject of this kingdom by taking the oath of allegiance. According to the Hawaiian government census of 1890, the total population of Hawaiian subjects, which is the nationality of the country, was at 48,107. Here's the breakdown by ethnicity, where clearly the aboriginals, which were the native population, constituted nearly 85% of the national population. In the Hawaiian language, a native of pure aboriginal blood is called Kanaka Maoli, and the native who is part aboriginal is called Hapa. Both pure and part were called Kanaka. The 1890 census also provided the number of resident aliens throughout the islands to be 41,873. Here is the breakdown by nationality. By the census, you can clearly see that the Hawaiian citizenry was multi-ethnic and the resident alien population was multinational. At this time, a visa was not required and an alien could reside in the Hawaiian kingdom for as long as he chose, as long as he possessed the passport. Hawaiian territory was comprised of 16 islands, with a three-mile territorial sea extending from each of the island's shoreline. The channels that separated each island were recognized as adjoining, so the channels were considered as if they were landed territory. These are the 16 islands uh, that make up the Hawaiian Kingdom. Hawaii, Maui, Oahu, Kauai, Molokai, Lanai, Mi'ihau, Kaho'olawe, Mihoa, Molokini, Lehua, Kaula, Lezan, Lisianski, Palmyra, and Curie Atoll. In total, the landed territory comprises over 6,000 square miles or over 4 million acres. Adding the channels and the three mile territorial seas off of each island greatly extends the territory of the Hawaiian Kingdom. The Hawaiian Kingdom also became a member of the Universal Postal Union in 1882, which continues to exist today as an agency of the United Nations. And by 1893, the Hawaiian Kingdom maintained over 90 legations or embassies and consulates throughout the Pacific, the Americas, and Europe. In 1893, the United States, Portugal, Great Britain, France, and Japan maintained legations or embassies in the city of Honolulu, while Italy, Chile, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Peru, Belgium, Netherlands, Spain, Austria-Hungary, Russia, Great Britain, Mexico, the United States and China maintain consulates in the city of Honolulu. Chile, Peru, and China reveal that you don't need a treaty to have diplomatic relations. As a fully recognized sovereign and independent state, the Hawaiian Kingdom was a subject of international law and a member of the family of nations. The term international law literally means the law between nations and not only provides the framework for countries to enter into diplomatic relations, but also maintains and protects the sovereign integrity of states should its sovereignty be threatened. There are basically three fundamental rights and duties international law affords a country that is independent and sovereign. Exclusive authority over its territory and its population, which includes resident aliens. A duty to not intervene in the territory or over the permanent population of other states and each state was obligated and bound to follow international law and the treaties they enter into with other states. For more information on the federal lawsuit, Psy versus Obama et al., visit www.hawaiiankingdom.org.